In this day and age, Kickstarter and crowdfunding projects are fairly commonplace, with happy-go-lucky entrepreneurs trying to get their favourite titles or brilliant ideas brought to life with the help of others. In theory, this should be a wonderful thing, an example of people pitching in together to help realise a dream. But in reality, it can definitely be a bit of a nightmare, with products failing to live up to promises or even failing to exist at all. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the games that shot for the moon but only ended up blasting chunks out of their own feet, pissing off countless people in the process and in some cases blacklisting those responsible entirely. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 times crowdfunding video games slapped you right in your face. Number 10. Yog Ventures Yogscast, as you might well know, is a ridiculously popular YouTube channel with 7 million plus subscribers and in fact, up until recently, even had alumni from what culture work in there. Alright lads. All of this would help explain why, when the group proposed an open-world Minecraft-like game based on their characters and concepts, they doubled its $250,000 goal. From there, it was full steam ahead as the group hired Winter Cool Games to take on development. Although a rough beta eventually came out, the title was otherwise delayed numerous times over a two-year period. As you might imagine, this ate into funds until there was literally nothing left and the project was axed in 2014. Plenty of angry backers naturally fired off in the forums, and then things went really ugly in a back and forth between Winter Cool and Yogg's cast concerning over $150,000 of the game's budget that was unaccounted for. Yeesh. However, the real losers in this situation were the fans, who were given access to a game called Tug, another Yogg's cast endorsed game as a consolation, but that was just huh, subpar at best, and not the game that they backed. Number 9. Code Hero have you ever wanted to make a video game but were completely intimidated by the painstaking process of, you know, actually making it? Well, Primer Labs has got the game for you, a title called Code Hero, which had the incredible idea of breaking down obtuse coding processes and changing it into an actual first-person video game where you could build games in a practical and fun manner. It was a wildly ambitious concept to be sure, but one with great potential, so much so that the crowdfunding goals took off like wildfire. But ironically, the process of making the game about making games turned out to be really difficult. Delay after delay hit the title, but even worse was the radio silence that accompanied it. Backers were fuming when the dedicated funding site went completely down without warning on several occasions. When the backers threatened legal action, the studio finally responded and forced out a beta version in 2016, although that's as far as the game has come along since, with it likely, if not officially, being pronounced dead. Number 8. Ant Simulator as niche as the audience is, the simulator brand of titles certainly has had a long and dedicated following. Whether it be the mundane agricultural sweat work of Tractor Simulator or the wildlife-based survival of Bear Simulator, there's something for everyone. And no word of a lie, Euro Truck Simulator 2 is legit amazing. I can't drive in real life, but I certainly do love sitting in traffic in this game. With the seemingly endless pot to draw from, the three-man studio of Eteski had the bright idea to create a simulation game based on the world of ants, and so Ant Simulator was born. And because Simulator fans are a strange lot, they exceeded their campaign goals via their own independent crowdfunding site back in 2014. Sadly, things fell apart in a manner befitting a classic Greek tragedy or something off Geordie Shore or whatever, in that the three close friends all turned on each other in a cutthroat manner, with main developer Eric exiting the company and accusing his ex-partners of blowing through the funds due to their penchant for partying and strippers. No, I am deadly serious. The remaining partners clapped back by denying allegations and prevented Eric from continuing the game on his own. And while this was entertaining to watch, fans and backers got precisely nada from the bickering. Number 7. The Stomping Land this successful Kickstarter sold itself as a massive open-world multiplayer survival game featuring many, 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 many dinosaurs. If that sounds similar to Ark Survival Evolved, it's because on paper it pretty much was, although Lands opted not to go for the sci-fi vibe and instead placed you in the animal skins of a primordial hunter instead. With some great conceptual video and artwork, the campaign exceeded its end goal by over £80,000 in 2013, making the thirst for the title blatantly apparent. Despite an eventual early access release gaining a promising rep, the title missed its mid-2014 release date and then went completely off comms.
problems. Customers and even an unpaid freelance developer grew angry as the game's lead, Alex Fundora, had disappeared with all the cash. Oof, awkward. Yeah, you forget that they can just do that. Eventually, the early access title was taken down by Steam, with this being chalked down to another black mark on crowdfunding games. Number 6. Ariel Fans of the underrated Stalker series rejoiced as members of developer GSC Games World formed West Games and hit up Kickstarter to crowdfund their new project which, well, looked a hell of a lot like Stalker. In fact, unknown to most, unused concept art and former videos from that series were being used to market this product. Ooh ooh, naughty naughty. To fans, it looked like a genuine spiritual successor and West was able to surpass their goal of £41,152 rather quickly. But Kickstarter soon caught on to this though and suspended the campaign. Afterwards, events got even stranger. The Ukrainian studio stated the suspension was due to them being a victim of a Russia media scapegoating campaign. They then attempted a second crowdfunding campaign at the dodgy and now defunct site Worldwide Funding, with the game now subtly retitled as Stalker Apocalypse, but that project was taken down for obvious reasons. Unfortunately for backers, the game never materialized, but at least this time the devs were unable to take the money and run. Number 5. Clang Back in 2012, Neil Stevenson went to Kickstarter to create a sword fighting game unlike no other. Having been a major fan of the artistry of sword combat and having heavily researched it, he felt it was time for a game that portrayed things realistically. His concept, named Clang, smoothly sailed over its campaign goal of half a million dollars. The author then worked with Supertai Corporation to make his dream game happen. All seemed to be going well for Clang. It's just a shame then that things ended with a dull thud because after two years, Stevenson and announced that he just burned through all the cash and the resulting prototype wasn't even fun to play. The game was cut and that's all she wrote, leaving fans looking like your mum's face after a bukkake with a whole lot of nut in. And yes, that was my genius one per list. Number 4. Unsung Story – Tale of the Guardians a passion project from Yusumi Matsuno, director of respected JRPGs Final Fantasy Tactics and Vagrant Story, Unsung Story was pitched as a spiritual successor to those titles which got fans wet under the collar. Also side note, if you've not played Vagrant Story, do yourself a favor as it is utterly ace. A Kickstarter investment of $660,000 was reached, with Matsuno teaming with Playdeck to create his hyped project. Three years passed and it was all fraught with behind-the-scenes drama, missed drop dates and even a full reworking of the game to become a PvP title which wasn't advertised and therefore players hadn't backed. Another developer, Little Orbit, came in to take on the development, but they essentially scrapped all the former work and haven't received a penny of the crowdfunding. On a positive note, they have been giving frequent updates and have brought the title back to its original concept. This is actually one of the only entries on this list that may still end well for the backers, but the road to get there has left a lot with chafed thighs and sore cheeks. Number 3. Takedown Red Saber Takedown was meant to be a game that took shooters back to its roots and heavily called on the likes of Rainbow Six games of the past, which, as you can imagine, caused a great bit of interest in the title, including the interest of Robert Bowling, ex-Infinity Ward community manager who stepped in to become a huge supporter of the project. The title hit its goal quickly after this, with the developers keeping true to its word of creating a rough-edged proof of concept. Then they landed a publisher, specifically 505 Games. Oh, well, I'm sure this will turn out… oh no! Yeah, so it's actually pretty hard to see how this game was actually worked on after the demo because this looks exactly the same, and as a result, fans were left truly disappointed and it's why the game holds a score of just 34 on Metacritic. Number 2. Goddess Oh, Peter Molyneux, you trickster god you, always playing around with people's expectations and spouting promises like you've got verbal diarrhea. When will you bloody learn? Well, people had hoped it would have been a lesson taught from his fable backlash, but no, he was at it again with Goddess in 2013, which was kickstarted thanks to his industry heft and promised once again to change the world as we knew it through a game. During development, a free-to-play mobile version eventually took precedence over the PC version and was released in a watered-down microtransaction riddled drivel. The PC version, on the other hand, still remains in early access six years later, with several promising features being cut and basically being a glorified port of the mobile version. It remains yet another overhyped misfire to Molyneux's name in the last few years, but at least it's led to him finally finally being called out on it. And number 1. Mighty Number no. 9 
of course it was always going to be this game, wasn't it? I mean, I mean, it's Keiji Inafune, the major force of the Mega Man franchise who left Capcom in 2010 because the publisher decided to axe both Mega Man Legends 3 and Mega Man Universe. Both fans and Inafune were disappointed by the publisher who had blatantly neglected this beloved franchise. Inafune then embraced the emerging trend of crowdfunding games to make his dream of an unofficial Mega Man sequel. The campaign hit its goal of $900,000 within two days and then would go on to surpass 3 million and hit every stretch goal set. It was frankly kind of a big deal. But then things got too ambitious. Inafune's studio decided to bring in every platform ever and then it went into discussions to create a live action movie adaptation, an anime series, a comic book series and more. This was all before the game had even hit alpha stages. Not surprisingly, after two years of development, the title was delayed numerous times and when it finally was released, fans wished it hadn't been. A horrible marketing campaign, a gaudy and unpolished art style, and a lack of stretch goals were all just dumped on the public, and even worse, some of the funds from the Kickstarter had apparently been used to fund another project, making this not only a shitty game, but also a pretty shady one as well. And there we go, those were 10 times crowdfunded video games slapped you right in the face. I hope that you enjoyed this, my friends, and let me know down below what you thought of the video. But before you go and hopefully have a bloody good day, whatever you are getting up to, I just want to say one thing. The message of this still rings true. There is a great deal to be said about people pitching and helping one another. True, the examples of this list didn't work out as we wanted to, but that doesn't mean that helping your fellow man however you can isn't important. If you know anyone who's struggling with things like mental health or their personal well-being, then reach out and speak to them. Trust me, even asking how somebody is can go a long way to helping them on the road to recovery. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. And also, if you're interested in board games, then why not check out my other channel, Live and Let's Dice. It's been approved by What Culture, but it's a passion project that I'm working on with just some of the friends outside of the office. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.